Hello there everybody, Sam Strains here, welcome back to the railway and welcome to another Hornby DMU review. So it's been a really, really long time since I last did a review of a DMU. I think almost too long, really. So today I'm going to be doing quite an interesting one. It's one of the very earliest British DMUs ever to be built, um, way back from the 1950s. And also, interestingly, it's one of the longest serving DMUs ever to run on British railways. I think it's the second longest ever serving DMU, so that's quite impressive. And it is, in fact, a train pack from Hornby. It is this. Now, <laughs> I say it's this, but obviously you can't probably tell uh, what's inside here because all of the Hornby train pack boxes, at least from this era, look the same. So I can tell you that this is the BR Class 101 DMU. Uh, this version is in the blue and grey. It's really, really lovely. I believe the tooling for this model first came out in 2006, so it's a little bit, you know, it's getting on a little bit in, in years. And uh, the blue and grey version that I've got here, I believe, was first released in 2008. So we're talking a little over 10 years old. Now, I've had this for a little while, so I can't remember how much I paid for this, but the RRP back in the day was £100 or £99, I think. So for a full three-car set, this is a three-car set. I know it's uh, not ideal just to be looking at the, <laughs> just the outside picture here, uh, but it is a three-car set, so I don't think that is too bad, but we'll have to get this out and take a look and see what it's like. So hopefully the diesel fans will be happy. We're doing another diesel. Let's get this out and see what this is like. So it's been a really long while since I've opened anything in this packaging. Uh, as I said earlier on, every Hornby train pack uh, from a certain era, whether it was a steam, diesel, whatever, you name it, uh, they all came in this exact same packaging, which I always found was a bit odd, you know, because you can look at the front and not have any idea what it is. In fact, in order to find out uh, what it is, we have to look on the back. And it says here, the main text says, the locomotives and coaches in the Hornby matched train series are, where possible, correctly matched in period and livery with special points of identification to simulate the details of the prototype. So I guess that goes without saying when we're talking about a DMU where they would be designed to go together, but also bear in mind that that was the case with the sort of steam train packs as well, where maybe the choice of rolling stock or coaching or whatever was perhaps a little less obvious. Anyway, to actually find out what the train pack is, we have to go right down to the bottom corner here, and sure enough, you can see that this one is our 3146. It's a BR Class 101. It's a three-car DMU, and as you can see with that little blue badge there, this is DCC ready. So it is at least reasonably modern. Uh, I was quite surprised to find that this was uh, DCC ready. Anyway, are you ready then? Shall we get this out and see what it's like? I don't know when the last time I did a sort of big diesel was. Uh, I've done, obviously, little diesel shunters. Uh, the Oxford Janus wasn't all that long ago. But yeah, it's been ages since I've actually done a proper diesel. So I hope you're going to enjoy this. I'm actually quite looking forward to it. So yeah, it's got one of those blank cards in the front so that you, uh, well, I suppose, so that you can display the uh, train pack in a shop or whatever so that people can see what's inside. But we'll get that out. Now, I don't think, if I turn this over, yeah, I don't think I've got any paperwork with this one. Presumably, it would have come with some back in the day, but uh, my, this was secondhand, I believe. Uh, so it didn't, or either that or I've lost it, but I genu generally keep them in the box. So as you can see, there it is. It's a three-car set. Very, very attractive. I do like the uh, blue and grey, obviously. Very nice. No detail pack, as far as I can tell. There is a space here for a detail pack, but I assume that's probably just uh, part of the standard packaging because some train packs would have had a detail pack. Uh, so let's start getting some of this out then. We will start with the top piece here, and I think this is the motorised unit. There is only one motorised unit with this DMU which I suppose is fairly standard. So there it is. Uh, the driven bogey is the back bogey, it's this one here, and it, it is quite a heavy unit actually. It's particularly back heavy, which I guess makes sense because that's where the motor unit is. But yeah, as you can see, it's a really, really nice looking piece of kit, this, the uh, 101. Uh, that's the engine car, very, very nice to see. Uh, it reminds me a little bit of the, uh, is it the 108? by Backman. That's, I've also got one of those in this livery, which I guess is why it reminds me of it. But uh, yeah, there we are, and that's the running number M50318 by the looks of it. Very, very nice. I do like that blue and grey. Okay, so now we've got the uh, centre car, and quite interestingly, in real life, I think there's only three of these centre cars still preserved although there's loads and loads of the uh, the engines, I think. So there we go, very, very nice. I can see the uh, the windows in particular look really quite uh, impressive, very effective with those, uh, with the uh, printing on. We'll have a, a closer look at that later on, but uh, yeah, that's quite a nice little coach. It's got all metal wheels and it's relatively heavy. So uh, yeah, good first impression on that. And then of course we have the, uh, the rear car here, 
Um, and this is not motorised, obviously. This is just a dummy for all intents and purposes. But it looks pretty attractive, doesn't it? And uh, you wouldn't necessarily know that it was uh, just a dummy. No electrical pickups I can see on this. And I can't remember, but I don't believe this has any lights in it, which is a little bit of a shame. Obviously, most modern DMUs have lights. And I do believe there's a Backman version of this now. So probably, if that does have lights, that will will be the uh, the better set, I would imagine. Anyway, let's bring these all into shot then. I'll put them on the the ground for you well I'll put that one at the bottom there we are so there we go the 101 I quite like the fact that it is a three car set because a lot of the DMUs I've bought uh, particularly the Backman ones uh, tend to be sort of two car sets so uh, I think at the time when I bought this I was quite pleased that it was a three car set that was quite good so here we go then with a little bit of information on the class 101 and after that I'll show you a couple of these cars up close so the British Railways Class 101 was a very early class of British DMU, production of which began as early as 1956. The 101 is widely considered one of the most well-known and probably the most successful two British DMUs of all time. And over 500 vehicles were produced, even more uh, if you count the Class 102, I believe, which was a very similar class. And amazingly, the Class 101 could still be seen running mainline passenger services as late as 2003. And I think it was 2003 when the final was actually withdrawn, after almost 50 years of service. So that is quite serious, isn't it? That's quite a long time. Now, in total, 41 cars have been preserved, which is quite a good healthy number by all means. But it's worth pointing out that none of the brake cars have been preserved and as I said earlier on only three of the actual coaches in the centre were preserved so they are mainly the uh, the engine cars I would imagine. Okay so there it is up against the white background for you then I've started with the brake I think is that right is this the brake I'm not much of an expert on DMUs or anything in fact but uh, certainly not DMUs but I think that's probably the brake either way it's the one with the motor and the motor is just in the the back half there and I guess it made sense to put it there because that's the area where the least windows are. So looking at it from a distance like this, it is a relatively good looking DMU, isn't it? And uh, I suppose for £99, you do get quite a lot of train for this. However, there are one or two features which I found a little bit strange about this. Now, you'll have to excuse me here because obviously this was new in 2006. And obviously that's quite a long time ago. Well, what well, is 13 years ago, more or less. Now, I wasn't on the modelling scene back in 2006. So I don't really know what sort of level of detail was commonplace. But uh, this is a bit of a strange model because it's got certain details which are really, really impressive and other details which aren't really. So I can only assume that this was designed as a little bit of a budget model. However, let's start positive. We'll take a look at some of the great things. So obviously Obviously the livery is done to a very very high standard you can see we've got the uh, the lining here in between the blue and grey section which is done to a very very high standard and I must say also that the printing is done very well too so if you take a close look at that running number there you can see that it is really nice and crisp even up close and you've got even tinier prints like that such as the uh, the guard there you've got the guard lettering on the door and I think it says load to be distributed there in the bottom corner which I think means that you can't sort of load a piano onto this and have it sort of in one spot <laughs> in the very simplest possible terms and you've also got other bits of printing such as the BR logo there which again is a nicely printed piece but I think the most impressive thing about this for me is the windows if you take a look you've got those no smoking signs uh, on this particular car uh, the other cars have different signs on the windows I think you've got some uh, yeah well we'll show you we'll talk about that in a second but looking at the windows you can see that they are done really really well they're quite flush to the outside of the bodywork which is quite a nice modern feature and I think that's one of the features that helps to make this look like a modern DMU rather than the type that Hornby were producing say in the 1980s or something like that. Uh, so the windows are very very good and I guess while we're looking in that area I will show you the interior. It's a relatively simple interior but you can see that all of the seats are pre-fitted inside there which is quite nice. Although notably there is no cab detail really. There is the surface where all of the controls and things would be but as far as I can tell there is no detail uh, actually moulded or painted onto that. I think modern DMUs are a lot better in that regard but as I say in 2006 I'm not too sure whether that was a feature that we would see very often. Now if you look at the underframe you can see that there is quite a lot going on down here but it's deceptively simple really because all of that detail down there is just a part of the moulding. Now this pipe at the bottom here looks as though it might not be. At a glance it looks as though it might just be separately fitted but if I tilt it up very slightly you can see 
uh, that yes, it is just uh, black plastic that has been painted. So I don't know what to make of that. Maybe it's good because it was a cost saving feature, but it still looks realistic. Or maybe it's bad because it's, uh, you know, a little bit on the cheap, isn't it? But as you can see, the, uh, the detail on the underframe there is very, very nicely painted up. And I suppose it is effective at creating relative realism for uh, quite a low cost. As I say, you do get quite a lot of terrain, three units for £99, which is more or less unheard of, certainly for today. And if we take a look around the back, you can see there is quite a plethora of detail going on here. You can see we've got the corridor connector there. It's not a rubberized one or anything like that. It is just solid plastic, but it does look the part. And then you've got the exhausts on the back, which I believe are separately fitted and separately painted parts, which is really, really nice to see. Taking a look at the other end, you can see once again quite, a, quite an amount of detail. You've got the head code there, which has been pre-selected as Redditch there. Once again, more realistic windows with a separately fitted windscreen wiper. I wasn't sure whether this would just have one of those moulded windscreen wipers that you see on the more basic models. But no, this one is separately fitted, so I think that is reasonably impressive. But as I hinted at earlier on, there are no lights on this model, neither exterior or interior, which, again, I don't know because I wasn't really around in the modelling scene in 2006 but I'm fairly sure that it was common for diesels to have lights in those days so it's quite bizarre that this one doesn't although I suppose they look relatively realistic even though they don't actually work I suppose we've seen better you can sort of tell that it's just paint on there if you look super close but uh, besides that you know I guess it's not too bad for the price now another really weird thing about this is the couplings now if you take a look at this we do have NEM couplings on this model they are the wider ones so you have to think about it because normally uh, it's the uh, slimline ones that Hornby fit, but they are indeed NEM and that is good. However, this is the only unit that has the NEM couplings. It has one on both ends, but both of the other units, the, uh, the other driving car or the dummy and the coach, they just have the large couplings fitted onto them. Now, why would that be? I would have expected that would be because maybe the coach and the dummy existed in the range before. But as far as I can tell, 2006 was the first time they'd ever released the 101. So whether or not they are recycled in some way, I don't know. But it's really, really strange that only this uh, driven unit has the NEM couplings on it. That is really, really bizarre. Uh, so obviously they must be using a different bogey as well. We'll have to look into that. And speaking of the bogies, you can see that they are relatively realistic. In fact, it's one of the most realistic parts of the model, I would say. There's a lot of finely moulded detail on there, which really does look impressive. And finally, I will just show you the roof because once again, there is an awful lot of moulded detail going on up there. And I think that is worth a mention. So as you can see, it's by no means up to modern standards. In 2006, I don't know whether they had the railroad range. Uh, but I think if they did, this would have been a part of it, perhaps. Again, it's it's almost somewhere between the railroad and the railways range, isn't it, for these days? But overall, I think for the £99 RRP, it's not too bad. And as I say, I bought this second hand, which is basically the way you have to get these from Hornby. And I paid a lot less than that, I think. So overall, it isn't too bad. All right, let me show you the coach then, and we'll uh, take a look at some of the differences. Okay, so there we have the coach. This is the center coach, and I have figured out the NEM coupling situation, by the way. But first of all, I just want to say it looks a bit odd, doesn't it? Now, I don't really know very much about these things, as I've already said, but to me, it looks like the coach sits very high on the bogies. Were they like that in real life? That is my question. Okay, so here's the reason why I think the bogies on the driving car have NEM couplings, but these ones don't. Right, so it is the same moulding as you can see on the bogies there. It looks to be the same or very, very similar. However, on the driving car, the uh, both bogies have pickups. One of them has pickups and is driven. The other one just has pickups. And for the ones that have pickups, there's a different base. The, uh, there's sort of like a clip on base to the bogey, which has the coupling on it. And for the driven car, that is different. So I wonder whether they're using older bogies for these, which don't have a clip on base. But I think the clip on base for the driven bogies is a standard one. I think all of Hornby's diesels and sort of tender drive units from that era used the same motor unit and so therefore would be very very similar so I wonder whether the base of that bogey that clips on to hold the wheels in and the pickups in place I wonder if that's a standard part so why the coach here and the uh, the trailing car don't have NEM couplings on the bogey I don't know maybe the bogeys were older maybe they decided not to put them on I don't really know but uh, yeah that's a little bit odd isn't it but anyway taking a look at the coach it is similar in detail which again makes me think that it must have been tooled at a similar sort of time although you can see that the windows on the first class section there do have the little first class sticker underneath the no smoking signs and once again just the fidelity there is really quite impressive little tiny details like that almost make the model look a lot more detailed than it is so in terms of 
creating the illusion of detail and quality, I suppose this model does really, really well. You can see again, the underframe is relatively detailed. There's quite a lot going on underneath there. Although, as I say, once again, most of it is just cleverly molded. I can't see that any of it is actually separately fitted. But again, once, I, once again, it is quite an inexpensive set, isn't it? But apart from that, many of the features on this coach are exactly the same. You've got the same level of painted detail. The livery is much the same. And yeah, it matches very, very nicely. So we'll now get them down onto the track. We'll talk a little bit about performance. We will put all three units together and we'll see how it looks first of all see how close the coupling is and uh, yeah we'll see how it runs okay let's give that a try okay so there it is the 101 down onto the track and yes when coupled together it really does look the part doesn't it absolutely fantastic although if you do look closely you can see that they aren't particularly close coupled uh, it doesn't bother me but obviously if you're a serious modeler that is something that's going to bother you and it's almost as though Hornby have teased people by making it like this because obviously normally you just change the couplings to something that couples a bit closer but because only one car of the three has NEM couplings on it you almost can do it but obviously you can't uh, so that's really quite irritating isn't it really but uh, besides that it looks the part okay so let's talk about the mechanism then now only one of the cars has any kind of electrical pickup at all and of course that is the uh, the power car and the mechanism is basically the standard Hornby mechanism not the ring field one the updated version with the five pole can motor only one of the bogies is driven on obviously it is the rear bogey and it does use traction tires there's two traction tires one per axle uh, which i don't really like obviously traction tires are a bit of a cheaty way of providing more power without having extra weight Personally, I'd rather have the weight, as you probably know, but uh, it does seem to work very well, I must say. Now, the chassis on the driven bogey is a very, very basic one. It's just a plastic chassis with the gears inside. It's a bit of a nightmare to get into it to service it for a start because it all clips together rather than uh, screws together. So there's only so many times you can open it up without it, uh, you know, snapping and wearing out. But apart from that, it does seem to work very, very well. As I've also said, there are no lights either, which is a little bit of a shame. But as I say, it was cheap enough. So let's do a little bit of a test then. We're going to start with slow speed and see how this goes. Uh, so let's turn the power up and see what happens. And if I remember correctly, this one runs pretty well, but we'll have to see. There we are. It's just inching forwards there. And don't forget, this is under load. This has got the two uh, coaches on it. And look at that. That is such an incredibly slow speed. So even though it hasn't got the best mechanism in the world, and I think that's objectively true, you can see that that crawl really is nothing to sniff at. I mean, that is pretty good, isn't it? That is something. Let's try it backwards. Let's see how it goes in reverse. And I also wonder whether the traction tyres are really necessary, because obviously it's only three coaches. Well, two coaches, if you don't include the, the driving car. So, yeah, I'll have to wonder whether they actually needed those. But uh, either way, it works very well, as you can see. That is very, very good and smooth. And at the higher speeds, it's just as good, as you can see. That really isn't too bad. Right, well, this doesn't need to be run in because I've had it for quite a while and it's it's been in videos before, of course. So let's start this off. Let's send it off around the layout and I'll show you what else is running. So today it's going to be a DMU theme, so see which DMUs you can spot. I'll give you the ones that are going to be running though. So here we have the Backman 108, I believe that's right. And this is a much more modern DMU, it's got all of the lights and the interior cab detail and whatnot. So quite a nice DMU that one. And then on the inside line, uh, blimey what's this one called? I think it's the, oh dear, it's not the 110. Yeah. That's completely escaped me, that has. <laughs> what is it? I've forgotten. Anyway, oh, well, that's a poll. I will find out what it is, and I will put three answers in a poll, and you can have a guess what it is, since I can't remember. Uh, but anyway, it's a Hornby Railroad one, nice and inexpensive. Blimey, that was a, a mental block. Always quite scary when that happens. Anyway, enjoy the running session with DMUs, and see if you can spot the odd one out. So I definitely think there's a good place in the market for a DMU like this because obviously not everybody's all that bothered about massive amounts of detail and to be honest these days there's no other way to go is there you have to go super detailed or well basic with the Hornby Railroad stuff so this actually sits nicely in between and uh, so it's a good option if you want a, a nice cheap DMU with a little bit of detail on it too. And to be honest, from a distance like this, there doesn't look to be an awful lot of difference between uh, the 101 and the 108 from Bankman. 
And in fact, the Backman 108 was quite inexpensive as well. Um, okay, yeah, you don't get the uh, the third car with it, but uh, it's got all of the lights and everything. In fact, if you want to check out my review for that, uh, I think that's probably the best ever diesel DMU that I've ever looked at. Uh, really, really quite impressive, that one. I still can't remember what that one is. I wanted to call it a 108, but it's not. Is it a... I don't know. Completely forgotten. That's bad. I apologise. People are going to jump on me for that. <laughs> but everybody's screaming at their screens, aren't they? Trouble is, I don't run my diesels as much as I do steam, so it's easier to forget them, I suppose. That's the 110 there in the background. Oh, you're supposed to be spotting, aren't you? Sorry, I give that one away. Uh, so, yeah, the Hungby Railroad one isn't a 110, I don't think. All right, so here are some of my ratings then for the lovely Hornby Class 101. So the detail, I have given it three out of five. I don't know whether it's because it was made quite inexpensively or just because it's a few years old now, but the detail really isn't up to modern standards. Obviously, modern DMUs, with modern prices, of course, tend to have lights, they tend to have more separately fitted parts, they tend to have detailed cabs and that sort of thing. That isn't the case with this one, although it's not a major criticism because at least the price did reflect that. Now, the performance has to be a 5 out of 5. I don't really know how powerful this thing is, but obviously the motor unit only has to haul three units at once, uh, and it does that absolutely fine. The slow speed, though, was absolutely incredible, so I do feel that it's uh, justifiable to give this a 5 out of 5. The mechanism itself, though, leaves a little bit to be desired. It's only got one driven bogey. It does use traction tyres, which I don't think is great, and it is just a basic plastic chassis without any proper bearings in it. So it is a mechanism that's designed on the cheap, although it does seem to work very, very well, so maybe you can't criticise that too badly quality then i've given it a four out of five it is an all-metal construction and i think it's a little bit inconsistent with the whole nem couplings business which is all a little bit strange but at the end of the day it isn't too much of a big deal it just means that you're stuck with the couplings i suppose it could be worse but uh, yeah it just it's just a little niggle worth thinking about if you want to pick one up uh, it's more difficult than it should be to change the couplings value then for 99 pounds though i think a three car set with a relative amount of detail like this can't be bad not for 99 pounds and of course the second hand value is even less than that and if you think that that is the same price as the Oxford Janus shunter which is a tiny little shunter to think that you can get a three car DMU big DMU for that same money can't be too bad can it so I have been a little generous but I think it's justified again five out of five there so overall then that is a quite respectable 8.11 out of 10 let's put it into the rankings there we go fifth just above the Mahano 440 and below the Hornby Hall class not too bad this So overall, it does what it says on the tin, doesn't it? It's not a bad model for the price, I don't think. Uh, the second-hand price obviously goes for quite a lot less than £100. I think I got mine for 60 or 70 So when you consider that, to be honest with you, it's not a bad deal, is it? And it does work very nicely too, as you can see. Okay then folks, well that should just about do it for today. I hope you've enjoyed seeing a diesel for a change of course. And do let me know down in the comments if you'd like to see more diesels. And if plenty of people do, I will have a look in my collection and see what I've not reviewed yet. But for now folks, as I say, I hope you enjoyed that. Thank you very, very much for your company. And I will see you all again very, very soon. Cheers everybody.